Stepping into 3D printing can seem incredibly overwhelming for the uninitiated. And for those of us who have been in it for a while, we often forget exactly what this felt like. For many of us, it's easy to forget that the knowledge that we have acquired over time is exactly that, knowledge acquired over time. And even the simplest of topics can seem overwhelming to people who are just coming into 3D printing. This video is designed to set the stage for entry into 3D printing. The goal of this video is not to dive deep into each individual topic that I will be covering today. So let's go ahead and help you get your feet firmly planted so you feel more comfortable stepping in to the world of 3D printing. For the most part, there are two forms of 3D printing that are found in the consumer space. These being FDM 3D printing and resin 3D printing. FDM 3D printing being 3D printers that rely on the use of filament, while resin 3D printing are 3D printers that rely on the use of chemicals and additives. That being said, today we will primarily be focusing on FDM 3D printing, as it is the most common form of consumer-grade 3D printing, and most likely what most people watching this video will be wanting to address. There are various formats that can be found in the FDM 3D printing space, one of those being the classic and iconic bedslinger style 3D printers. It's called a bedslinger because the bed moves back and forth on the y-axis while it is 3D printing. This is an older, more iconic style 3D printer that is currently being replaced by more modern formats like the Core XY 3D printing format. These 3D printers are rapidly taking over the market as they have a more stable kinematic system. Not only that, their form factor offers a larger variety of features as they can be piled on top of the Core XY format, whereas the bed slingers are quite limited in their capabilities long term. These would be the machines that you see from most manufacturers today, manufacturers such as Bamboo Labs, Cheaty, and Flashforge. One other format that could be found in FDM 3D printing is your Delta style 3D printers. While not very common, these 3D printers have a very interesting kinematic system and have a rabid fan base. When it comes to FDM, there are no shortages in the different formats that can be found. Another one of these formats would be something like a belt printer. Now, while there are many other formats in FDM 3D printing, we're not going to cover them today. The primary three would be your bed slingers, your Core XY machines, and your Delta printers. And just remember, whatever format you decide to go with, it doesn't really matter, as the principles and foundations are almost always the same in FDM 3D printing. So now that we have decided on our 3D printer, the next step is where do we put it? Just remember, the answer to this question is mass matters. Once you see a 3D printer in motion, you will immediately realize that 3D printers have a lot of movement and vibration. And this is incredibly important when you begin thinking about the placement of your 3D printer. To fully explain and analyze printer placement would require a whole separate video, which we won't be doing today. So remember, a printer is best placed on a surface that contains a lot of mass and rigid stability, something more like a dresser or a heavy nightstand, but you don't want to put it on one of those little end tables. Technically, you could put your printer almost anywhere and it would most likely print. The primary reason that we want to be specific about printer placement is when a printer is placed on a platform that isn't stable or doesn't have enough mass, quality can and will suffer. If you can't find a stable platform such as a heavy dresser or a workbench to place your printer on, sometimes the best option is to just put the printer onto the floor. This leads me to my first and only rule for 3D printing, and that is there are no rules. You do whatever is best for you. Remember, these are only recommendations. At the end of the day, the best placement for your 3D printer is whatever works best for you. Once you've decided where you're going to put your 3D printer, most modern 3D printers go through some form of quick start setup. What this process is doing is it's going through the basic calibrations for your 3D printer. Most likely it's performing a series of input shaping calibrations, as well as leveling the bed for the first time. And it might even be doing PID calibrations for both the hot end and the bed of the 3D printer. However, many manufacturers put limitations over the amount of configuration that individuals can do to the machines that they have purchased. If after running this calibration, you decide that you wanna move the placement of your 3D printer, it would be a good idea to run this quick start calibration again, as it will allow you to use the basic input shaping that they use during the quick setup. As the values found by input shaping calibration can vary widely based on the placement of your 3D printer. 
and moving it will change these values drastically. So now that we've decided on our 3D printer and put it where it's going to live, now we're going to need some filament. One question I get asked over and over again is what's the best filament someone should buy? But the real question should be, does filament really matter? And the answer is yes and no. There are always going to be more reputable brands when it comes to filament. But the name of the game with 3D printing is experimentation. Realistically, what you want to do is go out and find filaments that look interesting to you. You can try these filaments, and if they don't work for you, simply don't use them again. Over time, you're going to find the filaments and brands that you prefer over others. And what other people like or don't like doesn't really matter. One thing that I will stress over and over again is 3D printing is about experimentation and what works best for each individual person. There are many different types of filaments, the most common of these being PLA and PLA+. After this, we have our PETG, our ABS, ASA, and then we move on to things like nylon and further engineering grade filaments. Each of these varieties of filaments has its own use cases and applications for 3D printing. And the further along you get into more engineering grade filaments, the more difficult they can become to 3D print. I would highly recommend if you are just starting out to stick to PLA and PLA plus filaments. And later on, you can slowly incorporate more filaments and more techniques into your 3D printing process. Now that your printer's all set up and you've selected a filament, now we're going to need something to print. Another question I get asked a lot is where do I find files for 3D printing? Well, here's the good part. There's no secret website. We're not handing out 3D printing files in back alleys. When you're looking for files with 3D print, they're incredibly accessible and easier than ever. The websites and libraries for 3D printing are expanding more and more every day. Of these websites, the two I use the most is printables.com and things.com. If you find yourself in a Discord group where people are working on different mods for the 3D printers they're using, it is more than likely the case that you will end up finding yourself on printables.com, as this generally tends to be the place that a lot of these people tend to upload their files. Things.com tends to have a more consumer-facing feel to it, with a heavy emphasis on their multi-site search. While I've generally been a printables guy, I find myself more and more using things.com, as I really enjoy the multi-site search feature, as it's not only searching in just the Things database, it's searching several platforms at one time. Eventually, you're going to find and gravitate towards whatever site works best for you. Now you know where to find files to print for your 3D printer. But what if you're looking to create your own designs for 3D printing? This is not only possible, but several other tools to do this are freely open and available for everybody to use. You can also check out my series for Blender on how to design and create your own parts for 3D printing. And with today's sponsor, PCBWay, you're not limited to using the hardware that you have at home for manufacturing and 3D printing. PCBWay offers several services for manufacturing, 3D printing, as well as sheet metal fabrication and CNC machining. They also offer services for custom PCB manufacturing. With PCBWay, you don't even need a 3D printer to have your own custom parts and files 3D printed. And even if you do have a 3D printer, PCBWay offers options that are far outside of the capabilities of most consumer grade 3D printing. Options like SLS 3D printing and even the ability to have your part 3D printed in metals like titanium and aluminum. And right now, PCBWay is running a holiday promotion up until January 12th for up to 50% off of their different services. So make sure to check out the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay, at PCBWay.com for up to 50% off. Before we send our file off to print, first we're going to need to slice it. Essentially what this does is it takes the model that you have selected and converts it into machine G-code. While the 3D printer is driving, the G-code sent from the slicer is sending instructions to the machine, essentially navigating the kinematics of the system and telling the motors left, right, left, right. The machine really has no idea what is going on. All it knows is its limitations and to follow the instruction set that is given by its navigator, the machine G-code that has been generated by the slicing software. There are several different variants of 3D slicing software available today. And most manufacturers of 3D printers are even shipping with their own variants of this software. But the most common and most popularly used in the 3D printed community would be Orca Slicer. Keep in mind that for the most part, a lot of these options have the same options 
or feature sets as every other slicing software. And you'll even find out that a lot of slicing software is just forks or copies of other slicing softwares. Once you've installed and opened the slicing software you'll be using, it's incredibly easy to become immediately overwhelmed by all the different features and options you're confronted with. Keep in mind, it's not important to know what each of these options and features does. You'll learn these over time as you continue to 3D print. The most important thing to know is where the slice and print button are. Many of the slicers available today come with pre-made profiles for most of the 3D printers on the market. Remember, it's really not important to know all the ins and outs of this software as you're just starting out. The most important thing to know is how to move your file around on your print bed to scale it up and down. And if you're using a model that has overhangs, simply go to the support option and enable auto supports. You can learn the more advanced functions and feature set of the slicing software as you grow in 3D printing. So go ahead and import your model into your slicing software hit the slice button, and then send a printer. Now that you're printing for the first time, it would be a really good idea to pay attention to this first print until it has completed. If all goes well, then by the end of it, you should have your first 3D printed part. But if something didn't go well and your print failed, don't freak out. There's more than likely nothing wrong with your 3D printer. Remember, there are a lot of variables happening with 3D printing. So unless you saw something physically break or do something that you really think it shouldn't have done, then there's more than likely nothing wrong with your 3D printer. And it's most likely just a simple setting or even the model that you were trying to 3D print. There are all sorts of 3D printing communities and individuals who are eager to help anybody who is new to 3D printing. Even if you are not having problems, I would highly recommend seeking out and becoming part of one of these communities as you can learn a lot more about 3D printing. One of the things about 3D printing that can be incredibly misleading is 3D printing comes across as being able to instantly have anything at any time. But one thing that you can't buy off the shelf is patience and knowledge. And it's going to take patience to gain all the knowledge that you need to be comfortable in the 3D printing space. You're not going to learn everything there is to know about 3D printing overnight. And even those of us who have been involved for a long time in 3D printing are constantly learning new things every day. Another quick word of advice when it comes to 3D printing. There are a lot of different things out there that you could do to your printer or mod or change. I would avoid these for a while until you become more comfortable in 3D printing, as quite often they can introduce more problems than they solve for the uninitiated or people who aren't used to modding. This video has hopefully covered all of the basics that you need to begin 3D printing. The last thing I'll say is I highly recommend that you check out any of the 3D printing communities that are out there. The people in these communities have a wealth of information that can really help you further along in 3D printing. I highly recommend that you find and take advantage of the years of knowledge that these people have acquired over time.